Hugo Pacheca there. Now, Cormac Smith is a former British special advisor to Ukraine's foreign minister and joins us here on The Context. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Sarah, thank you very much for having me on. You're more than welcome. Um, first of all, the question, I think, first of all, about the Storm Shadow missiles. Um, in your opinion, does this change anything? Uh, what advantage, if you like, does it give Ukraine? This is hugely significant. The Ukrainians have been crying out for three major weapon systems for over a year now. There's uh, modern battle tanks, which um, Britain has already unlocked the logjam with and they're now getting because of the challenges we provided. There are modern battle jets, which the um, F-16s, which the Dutch are working very hard on with allies at the moment. But the other one has been long range artillery. They've been, been particularly looking for something called ATACAMS, uh, an American multiple launch rocket system with a range of 300 kilometers. Currently, the longest range they have is about 80 kilometers in a system called HIMARS, which I've got to say they have made incredible use of. The um, Storm Shadow has a range of up to, we believe, 250 kilometers. And as your correspondent said before I came on, this is going to give the Ukrainians the, the crucial ability to attack Russian positions, ammunition depots and logistics chains far behind the front line on occupied territory. And that includes Ukraine. It could even see the Kersh Bridge coming into play. Uh, and strategically, what difference does that make? Well, strategically, it makes a very big difference. Ukraine is obviously um, preparing for a long-expected spring-summer counter-offensive at the moment. Now, we don't know when that's going to happen. It'll happen at a time of Ukraine's choosing. We shouldn't know when it's going to happen. But vital for that will be if um, you've heard General Ben Hodges is a retired American general, former Supreme Commander of American Ground Forces in Europe. And Ben has been saying for quite some time that the critical arena in this war is actually Crimea. A lot of people don't think it's possible for Crimea to be taken. The Ukrainians, I can tell you from spending two years out there, will never give up in Crimea. As long as Crimea is held by Russia, Ukraine will never be safe, will never be secure, and their economy will never be viable because holding Crimea, Russia controls the Black Sea and the vital Black Sea ports that Ukraine um, must export from. So these weapons, for the first time, are going to allow Ukraine to attack, you know, crucial supply depots, ammunition dumps, other parts of the logistics chain, um, deep inside um, a, a Russian-held territory, including the Crimean Peninsula. So strategically, it, um, hugely significant. And presumably um, that's why the statement released by the Kremlin this evening is quite so strongly worded. Um, just to, to reiterate that, the Russian side, it says, reserves the right to take all necessary measures to neutralise the threats. What do you make of that statement? I think we've got to take it with a pinch of salt. We have heard statements like this from the Russians from the very start of this further invasion in February 2022. Um, and, you know, they have rattled the nuclear sabre, I was told the other day, over 100 times. They began making nuclear threats at the very start of it. The truth is, the truth is Russia has nowhere to go with escalation. They have been committing genocide in Ukraine for the last 15 months, and I'll qualify that, that is genocide that passes all five tests of the United Nations Charter. Um, I was speaking to a senior Ukrainian diplomat the other day. The, um, 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 the Ukrainians, with the aid of the international community, are currently investigating over 75,000 war crimes, and these are you know, the most horrendous murders, rapes, tortures, etc., etc. So, you know, Unless they go nuclear, and I was listening this morning to um, uh, um, um, to a former British ambassador speaking on another channel, and you know what what um, um, what Lee said was, he said, you know, while nobody can ever say for certain what Russia will or will not do, it is simply not in Russia's interest to go 
nuclear because the consequences for Russia, I think we can be certain, um, would be very, very extreme. So, um, yes, I mean, the, the words we've heard from the Kremlin, um, I really think they need to be taken with a pinch of salt because it's nothing we haven't heard before. Okay, Cormac Smith, very interesting talking to you. Thank you for your thoughts. Uh, this